Hi, I'm Doug Wallen. I'm here to unbox my Edifier 3000 Pro. I'd recently purchased the Edifier S2000 MK3. This is actually the Edifier S3000 Pro, excuse me. Edifier S3000 Pro. I'll read some of the uh, specs on this. Frequency response of 38 hertz to 40 k hertz. Uh, THD plus N, honestly not sure what that means at this point. 0.3% signal to noise ratio, um, 85 dBA. Oh, right here, yeah. Signal to noise ratio of 85 dBA. Input type, this is what kind of matters to me. Uh, line in, balance, which would in their case is XLR, uh, Bluetooth, optical, coaxial, and USB. It's Bluetooth 5.0, if that means anything to you. Uh, it's got some power, total power output. Right, left, treble, it says 8, I think 8 watts plus 8 watts RMS. Uh, left and, right and left, mid range and base, 120 watts plus 120 watts RMS. So I take it that's per speaker, 120 watts plus 120 watts RMS. I'm not an expert at this, but that's kind of how I'm reading it. Input sensitivity line in 60 plus 50 millivolts. So balance, so the XLR 1000 plus 50 millivolts. I'm just reading what it says. Optical coax 400 plus 50. Uh, MFFS, I might be misreading some of this. Bluetooth 450 plus 50 MFFS. S. For the experts, they're probably just cringing watching me read this. USB, and that's what I'm interested in there, the interface with your computer, 400 plus 50M FFS. Uh, base unit, 6.5 inches. Cabinet size, 9 inches. Uh, it kind of goes on with some specs, but I kind of want, want to get on to the unboxing. And I probably butchered some of the specs there by trying to read it. Suffice it to say, it has some nice input options. Uh, some nice, excuse me. It has some nice input options. So let's uh, begin on opening this. Shall we? The moment of truth. I'm also featuring my new C stand. Let me repeat that in case I made too much noise. I'm also featuring my new C stand. So I have an upward angle now to unbox, which is, I tried to mimic that a little bit with my other tripod, but it didn't work out so well always. Oh, nice. Trouble with that camera is sometimes it, it only runs so long, so I better get to unboxing. Here's a box within a box. That's all right. So right here you get to see it. All this beautiful stuff right here. We got power cord for each speaker. And there's no saying that's gonna actually focus. But we got the power cord to each speaker right there. You probably won't be able to like feature every little stinking thing like that. But uh, and here's the RCAs, and one of these is going to be uh, that 3.5 millimeter to RCA, and the other is RCA to RCA. I'm trying to see if I'm in the frame. Yay, that's that's nice to have. I still haven't returned the other other edifiers. I will upon this being a success to what I want, or a match, a good match. They do have the USB cable. I'll probably need one much longer. I think I have one that will reach. Hopefully it doesn't impact the, the uh, data transfer too much by having it longer. Here's the owner's manual. Yay. And here's uh, your, I think this is your optical cable. Or is that called? Uh, I forget. TDIF, I think. 
They don't call it that here, but this is just your optical cable. And then your nice remote control. Now I think this was used like new or damaged box or something, but I don't, I don't notice anything out of line here at all. On my other model that I got, the Edifier uh, S, what was it, 2000 MK3? I got it brand new, but this to me looks about the same, really, the way it's boxed anyway and presented. There's remote control with some batteries. Yay, batteries. Now that looks very similar to the one I already have, so I better not get those mixed up. <clears throat> I better keep them safe or separate from each other. I don't know if it would matter. I probably would. Get this piece of styrofoam out of here. Here's our beloved speakers. Well, I can only hope that camera is still running up there. You mind if I take a peek real quick? I'll probably have to. No, yeah, we'll do this. I'll probably just set it on this stool. I was thinking about putting it on the floor and then lifting it out from there. Let's see if I can do this. They're hard to grab a hold of. There we go. There it is. I don't know if it can focus. I may have it upside down or something. I don't know. They're a good bit heavy. I think it's trying to focus, but you know, this is through a plastic bag. So. We'll set that one over here for now. Probably out of the frame. <laughs> but we'll get it back on the table without the box. Yay, there's that one. Get the box over here. They have so many edifier boxes now, including the, the stands that they go on. Oh. oh, yes. Now, there wasn't much for me to show you because these were wrapped up real nice. Okay. Give me a moment. And we could actually have this closer now that it's unboxed to that level. All right, we'll start over with that. I think one is still going to be the slave and one the master. But they each have their own, like I showed before, they each have their own power cable. But I think one gets all the inputs. And I think that one's actually the right one, which I thought would be the left. So I think the whole time I was demonstrating my uh, Edifier S2000 MK3s. And someone tell me, is that really Mark III? Well, I'm unboxing this upside down. That's all right. Or on... Veiling this upside down. There we go. Now I'm not anymore. There it is. Lovely. I like this uh, material <laughs> to protect them. Very, very nice. And I, you know, I could take off the grill if I wanted. Is that trying to focus? Is that doing anything? I don't think I want to lay it on its back, so that's not going to happen, but I could do that. don't really hear it trying to focus. Let's uh, increase the angle of this, or move it around a little bit, maybe. We good with that?
Maybe maybe I should actually do what I said I was going to do. I know it's close, but I wonder if it's having a hard time focusing. I'll raise it up just a little bit. There we go. So yeah, it looks like I grabbed the... Uh, Looks like I grabbed the uh, slave speaker there. Yay. Once again, I'm going to make sure we're recording. Card full. Well, that's a bummer. Good thing I checked. All right. So there's the, uh, like I said, the uh, slave speaker. Here's the master. I feel the legs. Those are the legs right there. Just a little bit over. Now, just to make sure we're in the frame here, let's scoot it over a little more. Still stable enough? Probably not. That's probably good right there. Don't like having it upside down like that. Some tape. Show unveil him. Should I unveil him by himself? Make sure that this gets in the shot here. We'll turn him around the other way. Those are the nice feet that they have. There, ta da! Smudgy hands all over. I try not to. So that's some nice. I think you can pretty much see through the grill, but it is removable. Really don't want to remove stuff and mess with stuff too much, but I know it makes for a good review. Assuming it's trying to focus in on that. So let me walk here without tripping over my microphone. It's heavy, so I can only hope I'm getting it in the frame. If not, I can do a separate clip. There's all your inputs on the back. All right. Heavy. <laughs> it is heavy. I don't even know if that's trying. So yeah, once again, your line ins with your RCA, coax, USB, optical which is SPDIF 
left and right, coax, well everything here is left and right. It's got your Bluetooth, don't forget about that. And it's got your uh, uh, bass and treble controls and volume control, which also serves as input selection by pressing on it. And then detachable power cable, which is your eight, figure eight thing, and then on and off switch. Heavy to hold. <laughs> Edifier S3000 Pro. I'm trying to read this here. Multimedia speaker. Nice. Let's put them both there. Let's put the grill back. Put the grill back on. Did I ever show the? I think I did. But like down here, this will show your what selection and what volume. I do believe. A high res audio little label that says that. Just in case I missed it, and just in case you want to see it again. See that? Don't want to see my hand, do you? There you go. Beautiful piece of art <laughs> and technology. Because that's what it is. I say that, giving credit to it without listening to them first. But I know the other one sounded really good. This just has more input options and more. <laughs> it has probably a better sound, I would assume. Some people were saying they like the S2000 um, MK3s better than these, but I've heard these do not need a subwoofer just based on their ability to reproduce bass. I don't have to know what I'm talking about to hear good sound, so that should be probably what I get onto next. Sorry that this light over here is flickering. There. All right, well, that's the unboxing. I hope I got that grill on there right. They do look kind of similar to the other ones, but a little bigger. The Edifier S3000 Pro. Hopefully I never misspoke during the video. Got a lot of numbers in my head there. <laughs> All right. Hope you enjoyed watching. I'll try to get on to the next clip. Uh, maybe I'll do a time lapse of me setting them up. Maybe I won't. Let's see what I can get figured out here. Well, I got it set up and I'm kind of getting ready to do like a stereo recording, one, uh, one lavalier for each speaker, but right now they're clipped on my shirt. I just thought I'd show what they look like set up. At least for the purposes of the video, I think I'll, I'll park them here for now. Maybe eventually I'll put them more under my TV, but maybe I'll like them right where they are. I don't know. They're kind of cool there for now anyway. Uh, let's see what they sound like. I think the first thing I'll start off with is, I think the first thing I'll start off with is my TV because that's probably the easiest. Because uh, I oh, well, do want to do the uh, Google Home thing and Bluetooth it to that. I don't know if I'll have to unpair the other ones I got or not. But I think the the easiest thing is my TV because that's like one cable that's right here. That's that optical take optical cable. Or actually, it's a coax cable. That one didn't come with it, but it, there is an input for it. At least I didn't see an 
uh, coax cable. This is just the uh, the optical, which my TV does not have, believe it or not. It just has the coax. I do have a converter, but yep. Well, let's get this set up for uh, a mic and adjust the levels accordingly and see what this sounds like. I mean, there's different inputs I want to try, but I think the TV is going to be the first one, but I'll play probably some copyright free music or something. We'll see how it sounds next. So I got to thinking if I set the levels, that means I listen to it, the music or I listen to the speakers and I kind of want the first moment to be on video. So I kind of guessed would be a good level, which is pretty much the same as what I have right now. I think I lowered the gain just a little bit. Um, let's see. I'll start off with a, a level. First, I'll turn these on for the first time. I'll play something from YouTube Music, copyright free. Then I'll go back to the camera and adjust the level on my preamps. Uh, probably be the Beach Tech preamp. I got the camera preamp down pretty low, although it could go maybe one or two notches lower. Um, but I assume that's pretty good as it is right now. I probably will have to adjust some. Uh, we'll see what happens here. <laughs> All right, I just have this lavalier dangling here. So hopefully it doesn't bounce around. I probably won't crank it, crank it. I do have neighbors. But well, oh, what time is it? It's not too late. I can probably still get by with it. <laughs> A little volume. All right, moment of truth. Moment of truth. We're going to turn this on. And then they're going to sync, I hope. I've got the master speaker turned on. Now I'm going to turn on the slave speaker. Whoops. All right. Right now it's on Bluetooth. We'll peel this, ah, uh, we peeled that off. Yeah, on this speaker it's much tinier. The remote is a little different. Optical and coax are together, but two presses, a couple different presses will alternate back and forth. So we're going to go with coax. Let's see, where should I sit? Gotta turn down the TV for one.
accidentally hit a button. Yeah, I turned it off. So what I did is I turned down the volume on the TV all the way. So here we go. Meaning I turned off the volume of the TV or turned it down all the way. All right, here we go. When it hurts like this. Watching the ocean with you, maybe up with a slow motion crew, and we up. So let's see what else I can find. I did dial it in a little better. Let me see if I can get uh, a little better settings, but I have to turn it off momentarily in time. Okay, I want to say I'm dialed. I wouldn't say I'm dialed in 100%, but uh, I did about the best I could. Um, let's see what it sounds like. <laughs> Probably, I'm not sure what settings they have it on default. Uh, maybe monitor. I'm going to put it on dynamic here in a little bit. There are several settings monitor, dynamic, classic, and vocal. I'll switch it to dynamic and I'll kind of give a cue on when I do that. Something not so warped. There's no sound. I'll find valid in your eyes. He'll always be my night sky.
So I'll probably listen to something I actually listen to <laughs> to kind of check them out. I've heard sometimes speakers need to be broken. I don't know if I really buy into that. Not a whole lot. I know there's mechanical listening, supposedly. Um, I won't confirm or deny it. I don't really know. Um, yeah, it sounds pretty good. I may do a little demo of how it sounds on keyboard. I haven't hooked it up yet. Um, but we'll see how that sounds. It'll be actually through my computer. Um, yeah, I'm pretty impressed. Is it twice as good sounding <laughs> as the Edifier S2000 um, MK3? I wouldn't say so. I do think I hear a little more bass, obviously. It's a bigger speaker. Uh, but really, I haven't. I don't know if I could consider that much of a demo. I just didn't want to break any copyright. Well, let's Copyright issues there. And one thing I noticed, and I think I, I read this on a review already, that the LED display thing down here, or liquid crystal, whatever, LCD, whatever it is, it is very tiny compared to the the uh, S2000 MK3. I mean, really tiny. you got to get down there and look. <laughs> but that's fine. Um suppose I could peel this off too. Let's peel that off on. To maybe it'll work better. There, peeled off. All right. Well, there's lots of things I haven't tried yet. I only tried that dynamic setting. It, people are making noise. Um. And it's time for me to make some noise, apart from a recording, so I can play whatever I want. Porcupine tree, maybe. I should do like Jars of Clay. Uh, there's one song that actually sounded pretty good on the previous speakers. I don't remember the name of the song right now. <laughs> but, uh, all right. Well, let me give it a shot. But, sorry, I'll have to do it off camera because I don't want to break any copyright rules or regulations. Even though I doubt if I get any monetary value out of this video. But, nevertheless... We will abide by the rules. All right. Time for me to, to really listen to these speakers. Because I can probably crank them up a little bit beyond what this would accept here. Well, I could have turned down the gain some more. But I, didn't, I won't crank it up too loud. Because it's probably, what, 8 o'clock or something here. Anywho, I'll get back to something else. Uh, maybe Bluetooth. See how that sounds. <laughs> We're not going to probably notice a difference, you know, on a lavalier. But anywho, thanks for listening. And again, remember to hit the notification button and remember to subscribe. And thanks for listening. Actually, I didn't listen to Porcupine Tree or Jars of Clay or whatever. Uh, well, then there's all kinds of things you could listen to. I heard Lonely Heart was a good song to listen to before checking out your speakers or owner of a Lonely Heart. Um, I thought I'd check out the U, the uh, Bluetooth, sorry, with my Google Home Mini here. So I did find, you know, I went to whatever you call this app here, uh, Google Home, and I found a place where I can pair this. So let's change this. Let's see how easy it actually is. Let's change this to Bluetooth. There's a little emblem right here. It says Bluetooth. Bam, Bluetooth. Now it should, it should, I'm going to say uh, pair Bluetooth speaker on here, scanning for devices. So it should be able to see it. Edifier S3000 Pro found device. Bam, done. Is our check mark and it's in blue found device. Wow. Of course, I had to find this in the settings located within this app. What's it called? The Google Home app. So I should be ready to go. Could not pair with this speaker, but it did say found device. To get started, press the pair button on your speaker, then select the device below. It did say found device. 
I was saying, bam, it's done, but it looks like it might be having a little bit of trouble. Some of that could be a, it could be I need to reboot my router or something too. Let's just rescan here. I did find it. And it might be because I need to unpair it with the other one. So if it doesn't do it this time, I'll get back to you and turn off. Maybe I'll scan for the other one and turn disable that. I don't know if that matters. Anywho, I'll be right back. Yeah, for some reason I had to. For some reason I had to uh, reset the router modem. I don't know what did the trick exactly, but I just reset everything, including the home mini. I even brought out the uh, the other speaker out here, the S two thousand MK three. There's not a really a pairing issue. It it can play one, then it can play the other, depending on what it's paired to. So let me demonstrate. Excuse me. Let me demonstrate um, the uh, Edifier S3000 Pro in Bluetooth mode paired with my Google Home Mini. Or I, I set the default speaker to these is what I did through the Google Home app. Says Google, play me some copyright free music. Distorted voice sound. Check out this copyright free music station on YouTube Music. A empty hearts and neon lights. The play with my mind. Gotta get out of here tonight. Oh, my.
think some more refreshment. Might have been the music. better stop it's like a little after nine here uh yeah those sound pretty good i still haven't played my own kind of music i was just doing the copyright free stuff but i may go out and i think there's a long usb cable that's been in the trunk of my car for a long time maybe i'll see if i can run it to uh my computer i don't think the one they have is quite long enough it's just a data cable i think and I don't think I've worried about being too loud at the keyboard. I'll just briefly turn it up. But uh, yeah, that sounds pretty good. Of course, I still haven't listened to my own kind of music yet so much. But yeah, thanks for listening. Hi, I'm back. I noticed over the the last clip I had that the, or one of the last clips, the song was kind of having some scratchy noises at the end or something. Um, I don't think that's the fault of this Bluetooth. I think, you know, if you have Google Home in your router and a modem, like, things can go wrong that way. So I, I, in an app, I updated the app and did a few things like that. Uh, rebooted the router modem again. But it seems like it is working better now. And honestly, mo most of the time I just use my TV to play uh, YouTube music anyway. But I like to kind of demonstrate that it does work kind of in conjunction with the, you know your smart device um in this case the google home mini i also by the way i do have this sonos um i do notice just as a side note that this thing <laughs> you gotta remember to turn off the uh, mic for right now until they get that problem taken care of where it drains the battery there'll probably be an update to uh, take care of that yeah it's Anyhow, that's a different that's a different thing, but uh, let's see how this goes. Now I could say if I'd be lying that I, I just sat down here and seen what happened and recorded it in a way we went, but no, I sat down here and recorded it. It didn't actually go so well, but it wasn't the fault of these edifiers. I just had to take care of a few things. Um, I think with the problem I had when I was trying to initially do the first recording of the one right before this that you're not going to ever see is I had my my Bluetooth paired on my on my phone on the main menu and things weren't working so I unchecked or actually I just had it forget the edifiers I, you know I had it forget the speakers and then I went back into the Google Home app and then things started working now, I don't believe that was a problem prior but uh like several times ago anyway but let's let's try and see what happens now that i think i got the problem addressed and it's probably going to start off with a lower volume i'll turn it up and i'll get this mic where it needs to be um, and another thing i think the reason there was that scratchy sound in the prior recording especially towards the end is i had this mic clipped to itself kind of as a way to help 
I don't know, sustain it or that's, I, I thought I needed to clip it to itself for some reason. I didn't do it to that one. But that's my theory behind why there maybe have been some interference noise just a little bit. In one of the clips, I may have had my fridge going too, but this time I remembered to turn off my fridge. In most of this video, the fridge is turned off. Hopefully I always remember to turn it back on. So I, I want, you know, as little noise as possible except for what we're trying to accomplish here. So let, let's give this a shot. And we'll try to play the same song, if I can remember the name of it. Get pretty close to where it was. I'm going to go play Where We Started by Lost Sky. Where We Started by Lost Sky. Jump. Playing on YouTube Music. Uh, empty hearts and neon lights. The play with my mind. Gotta get out of here tonight Oh, I wanna run off and fly And I'll tell myself it's fine to be alone Just to find somewhere that finally feels like home oh, oh, oh. I hate all this overthinking Oh, 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 oh
right, let's try something else. I don't know if it goes on to uh, another uncopyrighted song or random. I don't know what it does, so I wanted to stop it. Okay, I'll fire up my fire stick and play something off of YouTube music there. I mean, it's not going to probably sound any different, but we'll just show that I can change, you know, the source selection. And uh, I have it hooked up that way too. So uh, I guess what I like about it is versatile. There's lots of connections in the back to choose from. That should give you an idea. Let's maybe move on to something else, like me playing my uh, piano through here, my keyboard. Let's try that next. So all I should have to do really is go to the uh, balance. If I go here where it says line slash balance, and I just hit it two times. One thing about this is the remote is easy to hit the wrong button. Like if you're trying to do minus on the volume, it's easy to accidentally hit one of the uh, source selections. You got to be careful that way. So right now it's on balance. I'm just going to go over there and play my keyboard. I know I'm going to have to probably turn it up. A little bit but it did sound pretty good from what I could tell so let's try doing that um, I don't know if you need me in the shot maybe or not maybe a little bit so I'll probably move it over
Uh, sorry, this mic might have a slight bit of interference when it's just dangling there. I noticed that. Or when I'm holding on to it, or I think even when it's clipped on me, then it doesn't. It wasn't very much, but I could just hear a slight uh, clicking noise on there. But I guess to wrap up with my final thoughts, uh, it's a very good speaker. First, I thought maybe on the lower volumes that it wasn't giving me the sensitivity. And sometimes it doesn't, but I think that depends on the source input. Like with my phone, I was able to adjust the volume on it, and then this would provide more sensitivity on the lower volume end. Whereas on some other things, like what was it, my uh, TV, which had the volume itself turned all the way down, but I was playing YouTube music, and I'll, there's probably a volume level there somewhere, but I didn't see it. I see it on my phone sometimes, but I didn't see it on the Fire Stick version or whatever. But it would be like, i turn it one notch from zero or what, whatever, wherever it was at, because I can't really tell on here. But it would be there and I turn one notch lower from wherever it was and it would just disappear in that case but another source is I noticed it would play more with the sensitivity within that lower uh, what would, it, would I say dynamic level I mean whatever but it just depends on your source uh, but I noticed that I don't know if that's particular to the speaker per se at first I thought it was just based on how big it is compared to the uh, Edifier 2000 uh, MK3, which actually it's not that much bigger, but it is in this world of speakers, I suppose. I better stop before I start rambling and just making stuff up. But um, I like all the inputs that it has, and that piano may not have been, sorry, that piano may not have been dialed in 100%, but you're not careful you can get distortion off of an instrument and that's really this isn't really like a instrument monitor you know it's not a PA system per se but it does have the XLR input so you know it should be able to handle it and it, it does but you do have to watch gain staging but not nearly like it was on the on the S2000 MK3 that I couldn't really get to function or barely this does function, as you could tell. I did clip in a couple places, but I think it edited those out. And there still may be some slight clips, but that's just a matter of getting it dialed in. If you're going to do like a real recording with this, you know, I don't know. I usually just do line in when I record. Uh, but maybe there's a reason to use, you know, if you were using some mics to record you probably would do something different than a lavalier um, if you're doing it professionally but it doesn't really sound too bad with those lavaliers I didn't think um, I was tempted to do another recording with uh, my condenser mic you know maybe I will just for those who think ah oh, lavalier but I only have one of those mics so it's gonna be mono Let's try that next. Then we, be we better wrap this up after that. <laughs> Oh, that I 
So yeah, this uh, speaker does not disappoint. Um, it's got some awesome sound, the full sound. You know, it's got some treble controls in the back. And you've got some preset uh, profiles. I think that's what you could call them. Preset profiles that are on your remote control. And I use dynamic or monitor mainly. So with that, I think you do have a rough idea how it sounds. As stated, it does not need a subwoofer. And I think I could stand behind that. Now, the absolutely fussy people may disagree. Uh, I think it can produce some pretty good bass. Uh, and I can tell it's a little more than the S, what do you call it, the S2000 MK3. Um, yeah, it does, a, it does a little better job than that, and it should for the price. But those did pr pretty good too, honestly. But uh, yeah, these are a little fuller sound on the bass end for sure. Um, I think I will just wrap it up. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification button. I hope you did enjoy watching this video. I know I drug it out a long time. But if you're willing to listen to it, you should get some good ideas. Um, I do kind of wish there was a way, and there is, to get some speakers in separate rooms, just little ones, like Sonos, or, you know, those are kind of, I'm not sure about buying into their ecosystem, although I do have one of them, Sonos Roam. Um, I think, is it called Aerolick? Aerolick or something. I just remember Aerolick, and that's how I remember the name of the one company that, that does provide an alternative way to do uh, Bluetooth, not really Bluetooth, but multi-room, either through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Or of course, this has no outputs, but I guess I could, I could figure out something before we, on the front end of it. Um before I get down another rabbit trail. This is the end of the video. Thanks for listening.